Wild, freaky, disgusting sex life of Sarah Bartman. Sarah Bartman was an African woman who was enslaved and taken to Europe, where her body was put on display for paying audiences. Such mistreatment was allowed to take place because the white society of the time regarded African people and African women in particular as inferior. Sarah Bartman was a member of the Cuckoo people. Her original African name is not known. Her birth name is unknown, but is thought by some to have been Sisura, supposedly the closest to her given name. Sarge is the diminutive form of Sarah. In Cape Dutch, the use of the diminutive form commonly indicated familiarity, endearment, or contempt. Her surname has also been spelt Bartman and Bartman. She was an infant when her mother died and her father was later killed by Bushman Sin people while driving cattle. Both of Bayartman's parents died while she was still young, and she was married to a Coco man as a teenager. Sarakchia Sara Bayartman was one of the first black women known to be subjugated to human intimate trafficking. She was derisively named the Hottentot Venus by Europeans as her body would be publicly examined and exposed inhumanly throughout the duration of her young life. Moreover, her experience reinforced the already existing and extremely negative intimate fascination with African women bodies by the people of Europe. Sarah Bayartman was born in 1789 at the Gayum Tuz River, now known as the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Bartman and her family were members of the Ganakwasu group of the Khoihoi. Bartman grew up on a colonial farm where she and her family most likely worked as servants. Her mother died when she was aged two and her father, who was a cattle driver, died when she was still a young girl. By her teenage years, Bartman married a Khoihoi man who was a drummer. They had a child together who died shortly after birth. When Bartman was 16, her husband was murdered by Dutch colonists. Soon after, she was sold into slavery to a trader named Pieter Willem Caesar, who took her to Cape Town where she became a domestic slave to his brother. Hint, there is evidence that she had two children, though both died as babies. She had a relationship with a poor Dutch soldier, Hendrik van Jong, who lived in Hout Bay near Cape Town, but the relationship ended when his regiment left the Cape. Ba Artman had unusually large buttocks, possibly caused by a condition called stetopygia. An English doctor noticed her when he visited the Cape about 1810. He and the brother of the man to whom she was enslaved decided they could use Bay Artman's body to make money. Surgeon Alexander Dunlop was the frontman and conspirator behind the plan to exhibit Bartman. According to a British legal report of 26 November 1810, an affidavit supplied to the Court of King's Bench from a Mr. Bullock of Liverpool Museum State. Some months since a Mr. Alexander Dunlop, who he believed was a surgeon in the army, came to him to sell the skin of a camel apart, which he had brought from the Cape of Good Hope. Sometime after, Mr. Dunlop again called on Mr. Bullock and told him that he had then on her way from the Cape, a female Hottentot, of very singular appearance that she would make the fortune of any person who shooed her in London, and that he Dunlop was under an engagement to send her back in two years. Lord Caledon, governor of the Cape, gave permission for the trip, but later said regretted it after he fully learned the purpose of the trip. Bayartman was first exhibited in London in the Egyptian Hall at Piccadilly Circus on November 24, 1810. Her public treatment, however, quickly drew the attention of British abolitionists who charged Dunlop and the Caesars with holding Bayartman against her will. The court ruled against Bartman after Peter Caesar produced the contract that had been signed by Bayartman. Bartman also testified that she was not being mistreated, though she could not read. She signed a contract written by the doctor that required her to travel to England and Ireland as an indentured servant. However, the terms of the contract were false and Bartman remained enslaved for life. In England, the doctor set up exhibitions of Bartman's body. Bartman was made to appear with very little clothing on. Many members of the public paid to see her, but Bartman received little money. Some English people who were sympathetic to Bartman's plight filed a lawsuit to stop the exhibitions, but they lost their case when shown the contract that Bartman had signed. Bartman also testified that she was not being mistreated. In 1814, Bartman was sold to S. Rowe, an exhibitor in Paris, France, where the public showings continued. Rowe's allowed patrons to exploit body of Bartman, making a significant profit off her mistreatment. She also was examined by scientists. She was brought out as an exhibit at wealthy people's parties and private salons. 
In Paris, Bartman's promoters did not need to concern themselves with slavery charges. By the time she got to Paris, her existence was really quite miserable and extraordinarily poor. Sarah was literally treated like an animal. There is some evidence to suggest that at one point a collar was placed around her neck. Specifically, she was exhibited with a collar on some occasion. At the end of her life, she was penniless, which was probably connected to the economic depression in France after Napoleon's defeat, resulting in a dearth of audiences that were able and willing to pay to see her. According to present-day accounts in the New York Times and The Independent, she was also working as a prostitute, but the biography by Craze and Scully only notes that as an uncertain possibility since she was exhibited. Besides other places, at the brothel in Cours des Fontaines, Bartman died in Paris in 1815 at about the age of 26 of an undetermined inflammatory ailment, possibly smallpox, while other sources suggest she contracted syphilis or pneumonia. Cuvier conducted a dissection but no autopsy to inquire into the reasons for Bayardman's death. The French anatomist Henri Marie du Crote de Blainville published notes on the dissection in 1816, which were republished by Georges Cuvier in the Memoirs du Museum d'Histoire Naturelle in 1817. Cuvier, who had met Bayardman, notes in his monograph that its subject was an intelligent woman with an excellent memory, particularly for faces. In addition to her native tongue, she spoke fluent Dutch, passable English. He describes her shoulders and back as graceful, arms slender, hands and feet as charming and pretty. He adds she was adept at playing the Jew's harp, could dance according to the traditions of her country, and had a lively personality. Despite this, Cuvier interpreted her remains, in accordance with his theories on racial evolution, as evidencing ape-like traits. He thought her small ears were similar to those of an orangutan and also compared her vivacity, when alive, to the quickness of a monkey. He was part of a movement of scientists who were aiming to codify a hierarchy of races with the white man at the top. After Bartman's death, scientists preserved parts of her body. For many years, her remains were displayed in a museum in Paris to support racist theories surrounding those of African ancestry. In 1994, Nelson Mandela, the new president of South Africa, asked France to return Bartman's remains to South Africa. In 2002, France agreed, and Bay Bartman's remains were buried near her birthplace in Eastern Cape Province. Saint Hilaire applied on behalf of the Museum du Tour, Nature Lel, to retain her remains. Cuvier had preserved her brain, genitalia, and skeleton on the grounds that it was of a singular specimen of humanity and therefore of special scientific interest. The application was approved and Bayardman's skeleton and body cast were displayed in Museum d'Histoire Naturelle. Dingers but Impano Innocent from Rwanda has shown empathy with Nelson Mandela and request to bring her body to South Africa. Her skull was stolen in 1827, but returned a few months later. The restored skeleton and skull continued to arouse the interest of visitors until the remains were moved to the Musée del Homme when it was founded in 1937 and continued up until the late 1970s. Her body cast and skeleton stood side by side and faced away from the viewer which emphasized her statopegia, accumulation of fat on the buttock, while reinforcing that aspect as the primary interest of her body. The Bartman exhibit proved popular until it elicited complaints for being a degrading representation of women. The skeleton was removed in 1974 and the body cast in 1976. From the 1940s, there were sporadic calls for the return of her remains. A poem written in 1978 by South African poet Diana Ferris, herself of Khoisan descent, entitled I've Come to Take You Home, played a pivotal role in spurring the movement to bring Bartman's remains back to her birth soil. The case gained worldwide prominence only after American paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould wrote The Mismeasure of Man in the 1980s. Mansell Upham, a researcher and jurist specializing in colonial South African history, also helped spur the movement to bring Bartman's remains back to South Africa. After the victory of the African National Congress in the 1994 South African general election, President Nelson Mandela formally requested that France return the remains. After much legal wrangling and debates in the French National Assembly, France acceded to the request on 6 March 2002. Her remains were repatriated to her homeland, 
the Gamtus Valley on 6 May 2002, and they were buried on 9 August 2002 on Vergateringskop, a hill in the town of Hanke over 200 years after her birth. Sarah Bayartman was not the only Khoikhoi to be taken from her homeland. Her story is sometimes used to illustrate social and political strains, and through this, some facts have been lost. Dr. Yvette Abrahams, professor of women and gender studies at the University of the Western Cape, writes, We lack academic studies that view Sarah Bayartman as anything other than a symbol. Her story becomes marginalized, as it is always used to illustrate some other topic. Bartman is used to represent African discrimination and suffering in the West, although there were many other Khoikhoi people who were taken to Europe. Historian Neil Parsons writes of two Khoikhoi children, 13 and 6 years old respectively, who were taken from South Africa and displayed at a holiday fair in Elberfeld, Prussia, in 1845. Bostomans, a traveling show including two Khoikhoi men, women, and a baby, toured Britain, Ireland, and France from 1846 to 1855. P.T. Barnum's show Little People advertised a 16-year-old Khoi Khoi girl named Flora as the missing link and acquired six more Khoi Khoi children later. By Artman's tale may be better known because she was the first Khoi Khoi taken from her homeland, or because of the extensive exploitation and examination of her body by scientists such as George Cuvier and Anatom. Bari, and the public as well as the mistreatment she received during and after her lifetime. She was brought to the West for her exaggerated female form, and the European public developed an obsession with her reproductive organs. Her body parts were on display at the Musée del Hami for 150 years, sparking awareness and sympathy in the public eye. Although Botman was the first Khoi Khoi to land in Europe, much of her story has been lost, and she is defined by her exploitation in the West. Julian Joseph Vire used Sarah Bartman's published image to validate typologies. In his essay Dictionnaire des Sciences Medicals Dictionary of Medical Sciences, he summarizes the true nature of the black female within the framework of accepted medical discourse. Vire focused on identifying her sexual organs as more developed and distinct in comparison to white female organs. All of his theories regarding sexual primitivism are influenced and supported by the anatomical studies and illustrations of Sarah Bardman, which were created by Georges Cuvier. It has been suggested by anthropologists that this body type was once more widespread in humans, based on carvings of female forms dating to the Paleolithic era, which are collectively known as Venus figurines, also referred to as Stetopegian Venuses. From 1814 to 1870, there were at least seven scientific descriptions of the bodies of black women done in comparative anatomy. Cuvier's dissection of Bayardman helped shape European science. Bartman, along with several other African women who were dissected, were referred to as Hottentots, or sometimes Bushwoman. The savage woman was seen as very distinct from the civilized female of Europe, thus 19th century scientists were fascinated by the Hottentot Venus. In the 1800s, people in London were able to pay two shillings apiece to gaze upon her body. Bartman was considered a freak of nature. For extra pay, one could even poke her with a stick or finger. There has been much speculation and study about colonialist influence that relates to Bayartman's name, social status, her illustrated and performed presentation as the Hottentot Ven, though considered an extremely offensive term, and the negotiation for her body's return to her homeland. These components and events in Bartman's life have been used by activists and theorists to determine the ways in which 19th century European colonists exercised control and authority over Khoi Khoi people and simultaneously crafted racist and sexist ideologies about their culture. In addition to this, recent scholars have begun to analyze the surrounding events leading up to Bartman's return to her homeland and conclude that it is an expression of recent contemporary post-colonial objectives. In Janet Shibamoto's book review of Deborah Cameron's book Feminism and Linguistic Theory, Shibamoto discusses Cameron's study on the patriarchal context within language, which consequentially influences the way in which women continue to be contained by or subject to ideologies created by the patriarchy. Many scholars have presented information on how Bayardman's life was heavily controlled and manipulated by colonialist and patriarchal language. 
Bartman grew up on a farm. There is no historical documentation of her indigenous Kwaizen name. She was given the Dutch name Sayarchi by Dutch colonists who occupied the land she lived on during her childhood. According to Clifton Craze and Pamela Scott, her first name is the Cape Dutch form for Sarah, which marked her as a colonialist servant. Sarah J, the diminutive, was also a sign of affection. Encoded in her first name were the tensions of affection and exploitation. Her surname literally means bearded man in Dutch. It also means uncivilized, uncouth, barbarous, savage. Sarchi Bartman, the savage servant. Dutch colonizers also bestowed the term hot and tot, which is derived from hot and tot. Dutch approximations of common sounds in the Khoi language. The Dutch used this word when referencing Khoi Khoi people because of the clicking sounds and staccato pronunciations that characterize the Khoi Khoi language. These components of the Khoi Khoi language were considered strange and bestial to Dutch colonizers. The term was used until the late 20th century, at which point most people understood its effect as a derogatory term. Travelogues that circulated in Europe would describe Africa as being uncivilized and lacking regard for religious virtue. Travelogues and imagery depicting black women as sexually primitive and savage enforced the belief that it was in Africa's best interest to be colonized by European settlers. Cultural and religious conversion was considered to be an altruistic act with imperialist undertones. Colonizers believed that they were reforming and correcting Khoisan culture in the name of the Christian faith and empire. Scholarly arguments discuss how Bartman's body became a symbolic depiction of all African women as fierce, savage, naked, and untamable, and became a crucial role in colonizing parts of Africa and shaping narratives. During the lengthy negotiation to have Bayardman's body return to her home country after her death, the assistant curator of the Musée d'Alhoma, Felipe Menessier, argued against her return, stating, we never know what science will be able to tell us in the future. If she is buried, this chance will be lost. For us, she remains a very important treasure. According to Sadia Kreshi, due to the continued treatment of Bertman's body as a cultural artifact, Felipe Menesayer's statement is contemporary evidence of the same type of ideology that surrounded Bayartman's body while she was alive in the 18th century.